Hi team, um, I am doing another Q&A at what seems to be the most popular time, which is a 4 p.m. on a Wednesday where absolutely no one checks in. So um, I guess it will be quicker for me to answer all the calories, all the calories, all the questions and tell you how to use the tracker. OK, going forward, because I obviously asked you, so I need to level this up. I did ask you how to. Um, I did ask you to track for two weeks and then in your Excel spreadsheets you have the average and you have the difference and that will determine everything okay so let's first talk about the tracker what do you do in the tracker going forward and how you decide if you want to how drop the calories and by how much and what to take the calories from which macronutrients it's very simple. You look at the the, the, av the difference between week two and week one. That's it. And when you look at the weight loss, you're looking between half to 1% of your body weight per week. So what does that mean? If you're tracking in pounds and you are 200 pounds, you're looking to lose one to two pounds a week. If you are tracking in kilos and you know you are 100 kilos, you're looking to lose half to one kilo a week. Okay, so, you know, yeah, that's you have a spreadsheet. I mean, it's easy to figure out the math around this. So the difference should be half to one percent. If you are not hit, not having a difference between half and one percent of your body weight, drop the calories. OK, and now here lies the question. I would say to be safe, you drop the calories by 100. OK, but obviously the more aggressively you drop your calories. The more weight you will lose quicker. So um, if you will look at your calories and on average, you don't think you are hitting close to your limit, drop it by a little bit more, by 100 or 200. Uh, but if you want to be safe and you are still struggling with your consistency and sticking to the calories, I would drop by 100, right? And now where to take the calories from? Don't take it from protein because you need as much protein as you can. Take it from carbs or fat. So to reduce your calories by 100, 100, you need to drop your carbs by 25 grams or drop your fat by 11 grams. So if you're dropping by 200 calories, you can combine that. You drop your fats by 11 grams and your carbs by 25 grams. Okay. And that's, it is as simple as that. And you stick to those basics. Increase the protein, eat until your calorie level, and see, you know, if you are prefer more on, be functioning more on fat or carbs. That's, it is as simple as that. And obviously keep doing your six to 10,000 steps a day. If you want me to review your, uh, your spreadsheet, please just share a link, share their link with, with me. When you click the button share, uh, just make sure you set up that everyone, anyone with a link can be a commentator or editor. So I can just at least put my comments or I can, I can be a viewer so I can record you a Loom video. That's fine. Just make sure if you want me to review it, just allow me access to it. Okay, so that's done. That's how you go for the next four weeks. That's how you reassess it. And we're going to reassess it together. Um, for the next four weeks. I would love to reassess someone's food diary here next week. So questions or things that you, for those of you that filled out the check-in form, things that you struggled this week. Um, how to approach snacks and stay away from treats. Um, well, the, how to approach snacks. So there, there, there are a few sort of ways. I would try to reduce snacking totally as much as possible. Try to stick to the main meals. Uh, normalize the feeling of hunger of, or peckishness. Uh, realize you don't need to do anything with it. You will just stop feeling hungry after a while. And, you know, realize that it takes four to five hours to digest a proper meal. Uh, but how to approach it? If you have some, you know, I don't want you to feel deprived because when you feel deprived, you tend to blow out completely, stop tracking, you know, we... Re redo all everything you've you know you worked for and so my approach to snacks is have them if you want to but include them in your calories so make sure for example you know you plan for those things like if you love a mass bar 
you just put and you love it daily. You put a daily mass bar into your tracker, first thing. So then you see what, what calories you have left with. And the main point is to hit your protein target. And so that's how you approach it and how to stay away from treats. You know, you stay away from treats because you want to lose weight. I mean, it's not something that you can't have your cake and eat it, right? How to stay away from treats is you maybe finding your why you want to lose weight and why you want to stay away from treats. And then things will be a bit simpler, like, you know, why are you training? You want to be healthier in the future. You want your ass to look better. You want your arms to look better. Then workouts aren't easy or pleasurable, but you do that. You know, you go for walks because it's good for your health, good for your mental health. It's it's the same like staying away from treats is because it's important for you to stay away from those treats. And but only you can make it important. And also, uh, oh, someone entered the chat. Not sure if. Um, okay, so while Pam is loading, yeah. So um, you want to obviously reassess your values, I guess, around that. And sometimes people eat treats that aren't theirs. They're your kids' treats, for example. So you know that's the sort of point to stay away. Another question was um, tricky week with being away. Uh, looking forward to getting more consistency. Get, being away. It's one of those things that we plan for. So like I know I'm away for the next two days. So I'm already planning, okay, if I will stop at welcome break because I will need to charge my car, I will go and grab sort of lean chicken or the leanest, most protein-packed sandwich and Diet Coke, for example, and, and you know, and a coffee. Oh, actually, I actually have a coffee now. Uh, so it's just uh, good weeks are for you to plan for uh, weeks that are not so great. I don't think Pam actually entered. So um, keeping focus. So I am here. Oh Jesus Christ! I did not even see you. Oh, is my not camera terrible. not on? No, it's not. I didn't even see that you're in. Oh, oh my goodness! Have you been talking about me? Yeah, shit. <laughs> I was saying you're the worst member, Pam. Yeah, whatever. Uh, <laughs> Pam, I'm, 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 I'm. You can have a camera on or off, however you like. Um, so basically, as you can see, the the time of 4 p.m. on a Wednesday is very popular <laughs> because uh, you are you and me are here. So I'm just going through the questions and, you know, I first answered what to do with the tracker and I just answered the first two questions. Hi. Feels like lockdown workout again, except you were in the mm-hmm. kitchen then. I was in the kitchen then. Because I remember when you were doing press-ups on them. That doesn't matter. Um, how are you? I'm okay. I'm okay. I feel I feel I missed you on a workout last night. I think you were booked for evening, right? Yeah, I didn't come yesterday. I wasn't very well. I had the worst headache in the world. Um, oh no, are you feeling better? Um it was um I was fasting yesterday. Right. Um for the whole day. <laughs> and I had I just felt really ill from it and I broke my fast, but I was like, I can't go to the gym. No way. <laughs> okay, makes sense. Yeah, probably when you fast are you fasting for any reason? just it's a once a year thing um it's right it's a thing that i do once a year so yeah i did that um but yeah it it was fine yeah when you fast you don't want to train i would say you know you have less energy sometimes we feel we have more energy because of adrenaline but if you had a you know if you went on about your day yeah Yeah, i didn't even have yeah i didn't even have water because i'm not so it was um, a so it was a full one yeah so right so that that explains the headache i guess and i've only just shifted the headache even though i've eaten it's taken but i'm all right it's good (laughs) i can do it exactly of course you can do you have do you have any questions like around shred or around anything that before i will tackle the rest of the forms um i think not generally i'll probably send you my tracker um just i guess i just i need to up my fiber intake that's what i'm noticing um, right yeah, yeah you so want to go you want to go be around i think 10 grams per thousand calories so you know 10 to, 10 to 15 grams of fiber per thousand calories you consume yeah so, so for example easy ways to like if you like raspberries just buy a panet of raspberries yeah. and just eat them 
There are yeah. eight grams of you know eight grams of fiber in a in a one panet of raspberry. So it's a... it, yeah. In the past, the way I've done it, and I've just not been prepared, but I'll try and do it tonight. Is I used to soak chia seeds overnight with almond milk, okay. and then I, in the morning I used to throw in some like raspberries or stuff, and I'd have that for my breakfast. Yeah, like an overnight would... oats style. I don't like it. overnight oats style, but chia seeds only. Um, and that would actually really help because you'd get your fiber, pretty much get your entire day's fiber yeah. in one go. Yeah, I mean, the risk of getting too much fiber in one go is obviously the toilet. Yeah. But um, yeah. yeah, but then, yeah, if, if you can tolerate, it's kind of like with everything. If you can tolerate the dose, then absolutely go for it, right? I know. I mean, I'm like, not going to start, I'm not going to sit here and talk about poo for the next hour, but um, it's. I think that's always the piece I find challenging. Whenever I do anything like shred, the first couple of weeks, I don't see any don't see any significant weight loss because of the fiber. And then I manage to get into the routine of okay planning, and then I start to see a difference because I'm getting the right amount of fiber, you know, and and then it all starts working out. Yeah, yeah. I, I so so that's so that's that that's that's the sort of sometimes the stumbling block with weight but yeah. oftentimes when you feel that you've lost weight as in you feel a bit more hollow you know there's less sort of digestion going from carbs so you feel you lost weight but the scale isn't showing what what possibly is happening as well is your fat oxidized you lost fat but you're holding on to some water and if you usually female members have that right it's a, it's a sort of more complex hormonal sort of system i guess then what happens is as you keep consistency up, as, you, as you've as you been consistent with your exercise, with your movement, and with your nutrition, then the, the weight almost seems like you lost a lot of weight overnight. But the whole thing is just, just water oxidized as well. Because if you think about, it's not very efficient for your body to keep losing fat and building new fat cells, new, new triglycerides. So Sometimes when you initially lose fat, your body holds on to the actual storage area for it. So it's not a waste of energy to build. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it is everything boils down to consistency, however you dress it. Everything yeah, no. boils down, even like holding on, you know, as I explained, changes on the sh spreadsheet, which, as I said, if you want to share it with me, just click share button. Make sure that anyone would link and I can be either editor, commenter, or viewer, but because I will record like a Loom video for you. But it is about tracking and making the decision based on that. Yeah, yeah. No, I will share it with you. I haven't got it open right now, um, but I will share it with you because it's, be... it's okay. I can maybe discuss it next week, actually. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. I find that the first two weeks is just about getting into the good habits um, yeah. and consistency, and then from week three onwards. Whenever I've done this in the past, it's week three onwards that I'm starting to nail my habits and finding out what works and what doesn't. Exactly, exactly. It's, it's, it's almost like, but it's, it requires a conscious effort, right? A conscious decision making towards the sort of results you want to achieve. And I would always say the moment you feel like you're getting there, it could be potentially in itself a red flag that like, am I getting over too com confident or complacent so still plan still do the motions still go through the motions like you know you're just nailing it yeah yeah because it takes ages like you know it takes ages to go from okay i like doing something sometimes to um you know that's that's what i'm gonna do now regularly yeah <laughs> are you still there I am there. What have you lost me? Yeah, sorry, my screen just went fuzzy for a second. That's now. okay. So I'm going. Um, I'm, I'm I'm going through all the questions anyway. But but you tell me if you have any questions. No, I I'll just came to listen to everyone else's questions to see if it inspired me at all. Okay, so so far we talked about before you what went in. It was how to approach snack snacks and staying away from them. Uh, how to plan for a sort of busy week. And then next one is how to keep focused. And after that, it will be top tips on improving sleep. So that's sort of the the next. And there's a few steps. Who is my barber? Uh, what's the plan for week three, which I discussed on the beginning. And people say, you know, you know what's weird? In this form, I say, what would you like me to discuss 
to help you next week. And every, sometimes there's one person that always says, yes, please. And I never know if they're fucking with me or if they genuinely just want help with everything. Um, and if I'm under calories and not hungry, but under on protein, should I eat some? So these are the questions I'm going to cover. Anything that sort of... Um, I guess, yeah, that's a good one, actually. If you're under on calories, but sorry, you're under on calories... Yeah, you haven't hit your calories, but you're but you, under. Pro you're not hungry. But you're and you're not hungry, and you're way off your protein. So I would say, if you are first scenario, you're not hungry. You haven't hit your calories. You you are close. You are eighty percent hitting your protein. I would say leave it because there will be day, weekend, Friday, stress day on Thursday, whatever. You're gonna probably go over, or the tracking maybe is not hundred percent accurate. Just leave it. You don't have to. Protein is, prot is calories is not to go be gone over too often. Um, however, if you are massively under calories, massively under protein, I would just try to aim for pure protein sort of do, uh, hit because essentially the whole point on. I mean, it depends as well. I guess if you just want to lose weight, just leave it. Yeah, but if you want to lose weight but look toned and feel strong. And then I would just I would just top up with protein because the whole point why why you eat more protein on shred than you eat on any other day because of the calorie deficit will eat into your muscle tissue. So yeah, and also yeah. it helps you helps you stay fuller for longer, which is not the case when you're not hungry. Yeah, I agree. And I think for me, what I've learned this time around is um, not always going for the same protein source because it gets boring. Mm. Um, so, you know, before my go-tos were turkey bacon, chicken, protein shakes. Um, and as much as I don't mind having turkey bacon occasionally, I'm sick of it. <laughs> so what, so what, so what, so what now is your sort of go-to? So, so I even put like tuna, like, I don't know, yeah. I associate tuna with being very summery. So it's not something I eat in the winter. Okay. But... But I've started to have tuna because that's a good source of protein. Exactly. Um, and eggs as well. I mean, eggs, usually I would have them for breakfast, but I'm not much of a breakfast person. But for lunch today, I had a th Warburton's thin protein bagel with the seeds. Mm -hmm. I had two slices of um, turkey bacon, but I also had an egg. So kind of varied it had still with the turkey bacon, but with the egg it made a difference and it didn't of course boring. So just trying to vary it actually. I would say yeah, I would say vary as much, add as much as you can, you know, make a colorful plate and there's so many sources of fiber, protein, and you know, yeah. protein is in everything, in peas in everything. So it's not yeah. just the obvious sort of meat or fish choices, but also the more you vary the the nicer will be your gut flora and gut health, like in terms of just being a more resilient person, because people that often go on like prolonged diets or are into their fitness, they are, and I'm, I'm guilty of it. They eat the same thing, right? Same breakfast, same lunches, same dinners, just keep it boring. And obviously the risk about it is that when you introduce something new, you have issues. Your stomach has issues because it's just it's just a slightly different food, right? And it's I'm not going into like pseudo scientific gut health, but it's just the more variety you introduce to yourself, the more robust you will be as a person anyway. And my guess will be you are more likely to hit all your micronutrients as well. You know, have all the vitamins that you need, except D and K, I guess. But yeah. I'm actually taking a probiotic as well at the moment. Um, so that's that's helping. Um, yeah, always good. Yeah, it's just something I started six weeks ago. So I'm six weeks into it and definitely noticing a difference. So um Exactly. I mean I would I would I would personally, and that's that might be controversial, but I wouldn't be too or everyone talks about gut now, right? And I think yeah. Zoe is out and stuff like that. And Everyone talks about gut, but no one actually knows. If you look at all, if you look at like scientific papers or meta analysis on it, no one actually knows what optimum gut flora or what gut should be, what gut health should be. So, from a exactly, but so from a, and and because no one really, it's kind of like with carbs. 
you have seven studies, I think, on when is best to eat carbs. Three are in the morning, three are in the evening. One says it doesn't matter. So if you have such a variety, it doesn't. Re it's very individual, right? And but it opens up a space for a lot of let's call it as it is charlatans to yeah. just j j just pick on one thing and make a whole book or or a course out of it. And but just from a general health perspective variety is good variety in movement is good variety in your experiences as a, as a human is good death and in your food as well so if you vary as you say your protein sources your vegetables your spices your condiments all that stuff i mean you know if you think about sort of dieting is trying to eat a bit less with a bit more protein so it doesn't really matter what you put into your salads or your sandwiches, or your whatever, as long as you have those basics in each. Like, yeah. as long as you have fruit and veg, and protein in every meal, you kind of cover it as a, as a general human being, unless you want to, you know, step on stage, then it's slightly more extreme version of yeah. that. But for your day-to-day, -day, you don't need anything more than that. Makes sense? Yes, it does. I have got to go because I have to go and pick my kids up. That's cool. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna continue answering all those questions. I'm gonna record it. Well, it's recording, and I'm gonna post it anyway, so you can rewatch with a summary. Yeah. Using AI, using AI of course, to and summarize the video. You're away for two days. Yeah, I'm in Birmingham actually. You're oh! stomping around. I mean, <laughs> I'm on the cricket cricket stadium uh, for Edgbaston. A conference. Edgbaston, yeah. And then I'm staying in Park Regis, Park Regis, Park Regis. How is that is that is that Prat Regis? Is that Park in Regis. in Birmingham in town? That is in town, and the drinks are there as well. So oh, nice. Well, enjoy. It's I good. will. Thank you very much. I will say hi to everyone in Birmingham from you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Shall I kick you out? Are you kicking yourself out? I'm trying to. Okay, she is out. So back to it. Um, who is my barber? Patrick Fitzgerald from Three Chairs in Princess Risborough. He's lovely. He's a great guy. And I go on metal gigs with him, so makes it even better. Um, keeping focus. How you keep focus? I think keeping focus, two faults. A, well, as I spoke about treats, uh, rethink your values, what it means for you to do it, what it means for you in the future. You know, a year from now, how you will feel that he's stuck to it. Um, but also write down what actions actually you have to do. Sorry, it's my cat demanding food. If you if you can hear someone meowing, it's my cat that demands food. Um, it's still an hour, buddy. So um, make a list, checklist of things you to do. Two and a half liters of water a day. Four to seven portions of veg and fr fruit or veg, portion of protein, every meal, you know, tick, tick, tick. If you take those, walk, go for a walk, two, two 20 minute walks. Can you just make a list, checklist that is for you, that you can do, and that will keep you focused, right? Because this, it's, sometimes we get, we look at the big picture and we get so overwhelmed with what to do that the best thing to do is just chunk it down into what processes have to be done for us to achieve the goal. Um, hope that makes sense. Can you give me some top tips on improving sleep? So top tips on improving sleep is to keep your sleep time and your wake up time consistent, regardless of the day, weekends or not. Um, obviously, it's not always possible. You know, I wake up at 4 a.m. most days, so... I don't want to wake up 4 a.m. on a weekend, but I have a 7 a.m. wake up on Wednesday, 7 a.m. on Saturday and Sunday. So it's just, and try to go to bed at the same time. You know, that's the first building is that consistency of sleep. What um, building, and that will lead you to a routine around your sleep time. It's the same as you book sessions. Don't, those of you that come to sessions at 6 a.m., your evening probably looks very different to someone that comes to the gym at 10, 10 a.m. or 12 p.m. You know, you know you have to be in bed by a certain time to get enough sleep. Your clothes are ready probably. You just It's just a bit more methodical. You know, I've, I think it's called a sleep hygiene. Really, as a, 
your routine of pre-bed routine, you know, less screen time, less alcohol, coffee, half time is what, tw- um, half life of coffee is 12 hours. So I know I'm already messing it up by, oh, I just drank mine. Uh, so yeah, trying to not have coffee after 1 p.m., trying to not have booze two to three hours before going to bed, trying not, not to look at the screen an hour before bed. These are just like things that you can do. But I think the basic is to set a time that you go to bed, set a time that you wake up, try to keep it consistent and try to build that habit. Because sleep is such a powerful tool for everything, for survival, for food. You know, if you if your sleep is shit, you're going to eat like crap because your hormones responsible for fullness and hunger are out of whack. Your ghrelin leptin are fucked. So, yeah, that's that. Getting the steps in is hard some days. Alternatives can be done at home. Alternatives that can be done at home. So getting your steps in, first of all, remember, zoom out from a daily picture. If you get 2,000 steps today, 20,000 on a Saturday, you know, it still counts, right? It's a whole picture that matters. It's same with calories. You know, it's same with the money you earn. You don't, if you spend all your salary today, Versus you're going to spread over 30 days. You're still going to be broken, you know, by the end of the month. So um, zoom out, look at the big picture, look at your average steps and try to increase the average steps. I would say always try to increase it by 1,000 to 2,000 steps a day, whatever you are doing pre-shred. So for desk jockeys, you know, um, if you're you have a good habit of drinking water, have a water away from you. So you have to stand up, grab it, have a sip. Then you have to set up and top the water up. Um, you are on the phone. Can you be on your headphones and walk around the house like a tosspot uh, calling people? You know, obviously you're not like a tosspot walking around the house. I walk around the house and talk to people. It's basically using every opportunity you can to walk. You go to supermarket, you park at the, you know, you park far or far back away, you walk in. You have the escalator and the stairs, you use the fucking stairs. You know, all those things that introduce more steps. And it's, again, it's about being focused on it. So you seeking the opportunities out. What's the plan for week three? I covered that on the very beginning and under calories, I'm covered on the beginning. Yes, please. I don't know who says yes, please. But um, I can't help you when you say yes, please. Do you need help? Yes, please. What do you need help with? Yes, please. So let me know. Uh, look, it's been half an hour. It's been joyous, lovely. My dog fell asleep, so it's all good. I'm going to now wait for it to upload to the cloud and release it to you. Thank you very much. Love you very much. And I will see you next week.